Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus and in today's video I actually got a uh, fellow YouTuber's uh, pair, couple pairs of boots here to get resold. Uh, first pair, he's got a pair of Dan Post boots that he's got a bit of an issue with some squeaking, so it does squeak. So we're going to be resoling these guys for him and we're going to be resoling these fry boots for him that it looks like he was testing out some of those heel plates that I sent out to him and I don't know, uh, again, I'm not a big fan of heel plates, but he decided to test them out, so let's uh, break them down. I'm going to have to do two, probably two separate videos. This video will go ahead and do the Dan Posts with the speaking list on it, and I will do a separate one for these guys because otherwise the videos get a little too long. So I'm going to set these aside for this part of the video. So let's go ahead and get started and break them down and figure out what's making these boots squeak because that's mainly what was his issue, and uh, from the sound of it, it could be a number of things. So again, thank you for joining us. Um, let's uh, let's kind of narrow it down on these first things first. Um, that the heel bases on these right here, you can see they're starting to separate. There's a little bit of excess cracking. So that's usually a high probability that that could be what the squeaking is. The other thing that can be an issue is a lot of times that the shank right here has a tendency to squeak. So I don't hear the shank too much in this one. Let's double check this one. Yep. Hear that? That's that shank in there. So a lot of times um, that can happen from the factory that uh, the shank ends up coming a little bit loose because a lot of them are just held in by some adhesive. And other times it could be that the shank has snapped as well. Um, but it could be a number of different reasons. So for us, first thing is always gonna be to break it down. Since we have to do a resole. Ooh. Look at these heels. That's not great. Good thing he's having them resold. But see how they cracked right there when I pulled? Let's double check here. Oh, that one cracked too. So that can happen. This is actually kind of a dual piece heel on these Dan posts. So this piece right here is actually one piece of material. It's got more plastic mixed into it. Um, it's a little bit harder and denser while this outer shell here, which is the part that you see, it's got more rubber. So it's got a lot more flexibility. So that's kind of an interesting thing to, you know, see sometimes in some of these boots, but I thought I'd show you guys real quick. You know, the heel nails, Man, this thing's all kinds of squeaky. Pull these out. And so I'm just gonna kinda fast forward through all this part and just kinda really do more of the breakdown and take it apart. But get out those gripper nails, see? All that's coming apart in layers, so we're gonna have to make sure to re-glue that layer by layer. Now the option is that we can definitely replace the heel base, but the heel base is here you know very much intact they just need to be resecured and properly you know put together in other words so we're not gonna be completely replacing the heel bases uh, reason why we try to avoid replacing the heel bases completely is because this particular heel base fits this boot perfectly already um, it's not gonna fit the same model and the same size as well as it fits this one here and if I mix them up left to right they uh, won't fit as well uh, either so uh, Got a summon marker there. I'm gonna put right foot here. And then that way, when I peel off the rest of it, I'll stack it up so that I can get it all glued up. So let's start breaking down more.
another one. So we've got that taken apart. Let's go ahead and pull out that shank. So the shank looks like it's completely intact. It's one of those uh, thick plastic ones and everything. But one of the issues is that this is very, very smooth here, for example. And so what happens is when they've got that thick layer of glue that you can see right there, all that yellow, um, that the glue just doesn't really bind well enough to such a smooth surface. It, see, it just peels right off and everything very easily. Where if you have this surface area kind of roughed out a little more, there we go, see, look at that. When you've got the surface area roughed out significantly more, then the adhesives kind of bond to it better as well. Now the other issue sometimes we come across is, and this this is a very slim chance, but this can sometimes cause some problems, is these foam fillers because these are after all Goodyear welted, meaning that the sole is stitched on as you saw it, I was slicing it off. That sole is stitched on to this welt right here. And uh, so that usually tends to leave this cavity right here. There's a 90 degree angle drop right there. And so they have to use a filler. Now for us, in our case, we tend to use cork. A lot of brands also tend to use cork because it's better for insulation, better for support, and a number of great benefits. But most companies I've come across, they've been switching over to this kind of foam type stuff, which it may be great for a little while, but it has a tendency, because it is, after all, mostly synthetic materials, has a tendency to kind of come unglued in some areas, and this can sometimes cause some squeaking as well. And you can see this large chunk of glue. It's actually super smooth. So that means that this right here was not properly glued, and so when it was shifting around, it was causing some squeaking. So we're going to go ahead and toss this guy. Uh, thankfully, Jeremiah caught them in time because... He tends to wear out that toe right there, it looks like, just a little bit. So, caught it in time so that we don't have to replace the wealth completely on these. We're able to still resold them without having to the whole re -weld process and everything. Otherwise, it becomes a little bit of a pain, honestly. I mean, re -welting because for us, we have to do it by hand. Our goal is to try to make it into these original holes. So, if I can grab something to point with... So, you maybe you can see it right there. See that stitching down in there? It's very visible. There's a line right there. That's stitching. That's what's called the uh, stitch that, well, not called. That's what holds the welt to the boot, in other words. And this white felt material, that's called the gemming. So the gemming is glued onto this midsole, and that's usually what your foot sits on. You've got that gemming. Then you've got the inner liner, the outer leather right here. Let's see all those layers there. At the toe, usually you'll see an extra layer and same thing on the back of the heel. That's the toe counter that keeps it nice and stiff right there. And then you've got the welt final, or the, um, after the uh, toe counter, you've got that leather upper and then the welt. That's kind of on the toe area. And so all that gets stitched together all the way through. And for us, we end up having to hand stitch it because our goal is to try to make it through those same exact original holes. If we don't, we create more holes, like say factory recrafting. Some factories will offer full recrafting, but they replace the welt using a machine and it just creates more holes. More holes weakens the material, shortens the life expectancy, and that's not good. So at this moment, I'm trying to go ahead and pull up that insole so I can pull out these gripper nails there. Re, redo everything on the interior that way so that nothing is uh, causing any kind of problems down the road when we start adding more nails in there to re-secure it. And we'll continue on. So we'll see you back here in just a little bit. Now that we've uh, figured out the cause of the problem, it was definitely the shank. And if you're ever wondering as well, if you've got a squeaky boot, um, and if the shank is usually the issue, because when you're wanting to check the squeakiness of a boot, first things first, I always like to grab is to check the heel, which this one has a little bit of clicking and squeaking. And you can hear that because of all those layers separating. So the next thing is twist it a little bit there, bend it around, and you will hear that squeaking coming from underneath there. That's typically the shank. Now, if you're not hearing that sound coming from those two spots, which are the two main spots that cause issues, 99% of the time in that case, then it's usually the insole. Your foot perspires, the leather liner inside, 
tends to make your foot slide around a little bit more freely even if you've got a pair of socks then you've got a little bit of a uh, issue with some squeaking because your foot has been perspiring and it's just kind of sliding around inside the boot there are some fixes for that and i'll kind of mention that at the end of the video so that we can kind of talk it over some more but for now let's go ahead and continue on breaking these down now i'll mention also actually i almost forgot while i'm pulling out the nails that's what reminded me that one of the causes of squeaking sometimes could be something as simple as one of these little suckers here these nails they have a tendency to rust up um, because they are a steel they have to be very strong even though these uh, nails are kind of hidden away they're not you know open to the elements that easily but they have a tendency to sometimes rust up you can see this one has just a little bit of rust but once they really rust up especially if you've really worn these boots in some rough conditions then you start coming across that issue where it could be something that the nail has corroded away a little bit and caused some damage to the leather and also creates additional squeaking so that's just one of those things that can happen same thing with like these little nails here that are sticking out all over the place it could be something as simple as that and uh, not always necessarily the um, shank but most of the time that I've come across it, it is the shank or the heel base. In this case, it looks like it's a little bit of both. In other words, the shank and the heel base were squeaking. So let's uh, continue breaking them down. Next thing, I'm going to go ahead and clean all this out because that glue is not a good thing to have in there. Make sure that's all cleaned out. I'm going to go ahead and uh, rough these up here so that they're not as smooth. That way they adhere better. Now, there is an option to switch out the uh, shanks, but usually I try to recommend keeping the original ones unless they're just super tiny shanks like I did this one pair of boots here and add this flimsy little tiny thing in there and i definitely want to take those out and put something more sturdy one thing with western boots is unfortunately these shanks are not currently manufactured for aftermarket purposes a number of us cobblers have been trying to hunt down where we can get our hands on these so we end up having to build our own in other words um, which adds obviously to cost and time and material and labors so um but saving the original shanks is always the key goal that we're after so let's continue so i've got the heel base curing every single piece had come apart on these boots i just put the shanks in there to keep track of them and everything but yep that's the heel bases that row right there that is i believe the left foot and then this one here is the right foot so i gotta go ahead and stick them all together so they all cure while i'm working on the rest of the boot all right, everyone, so I've got everything cleaned up. The shanks right now are drying, well, getting put in place, but this is what I did here. You can see it's kind of a little more roughed up instead of all smooth. That way right here, this is all nicely roughed up. So because it's nice and rough, there's a better surface area for the adhesives to bond to. When it's smooth, adhesives don't tend to bond to smooth stuff. You know, it just, it just doesn't work that way. You gotta rough it up a little bit. But I've got the shanks all uh, taken care of on these ones. Um, I've pulled all the stitches as well. I've gone ahead and done that off camera because these I had I did have to pull them by hand and it's it's a very time consuming process unfortunately um, but at this point we're going to go ahead and fill it in now a lot of times with some of these boots you'll see is that the cork or whatever filler they have is only for the ball of the foot to fill in that cavity plus most of your pressure goes directly to that area and the shank does a good job of distributing the pressure as well but uh, we are going to try to get a little bit of uh, cork in these areas at least as well it helps with insulation and uh, jeremiah did mention he's going to be trying to wear these a little more in the fall time maybe even winter time i don't know how bad his uh, winters are out there we will be putting on a leather sole for him for these um but even if there's no snow out on the ground it could be chilly and that cork will help insulate very well so i'm gonna go ahead and get that cork filled in and uh get the soles matched up on them and we'll see you back in a few all right everyone so i've got that sole out of the oven we're using one of our house grade leather soles because it's nice and flexible and very nice and durable too and i've got the cork filled up in these boots all the way like i mentioned all the way across under the shank too so let's go ahead and put this on Very important 
time to hammer out that area right here under the under the arch area I couldn't think of what it was for some reason for a second but uh, right where that shank is as you can see it kind of bevels out like that so we got to make sure that leather's nicely rounded so while it's still hot I gotta move to the press quickly So I kind of got cut out there a little bit, but uh, so we ended up scraping up the heel with one of these to scratch it up. It's just a scratcher and it roughs up that area, especially after hammering. It kind of uh, smoothens out that leather and we want to make sure it's as rough as possible. Go ahead and pull out the heel base out of the oven. Now I did run some wire nail. You can maybe see right there. See that wire nail all around the edges here and it kind of just shoots the nails in here it kind of helps keep all these layers together a little bit more securely i like doing that with a lot of western heel bases especially gives it just a little bit of extra security especially considering that these were all kinds of peeling apart so got everything on this one i'm gonna stick this on the press let it cure for a little while and run nails in through the inside uh, if you want to see that oh. Oh, that's just Marcus going out. But if you want to see that out, uh, I'm not going to really put this in the video because our main thing that we're trying to get after is the squeaky part of it. And so, um, you know, a number of my videos I've shown that were how we run the nails in through the inside as well. But I'll go ahead and get that taken care of, especially while this thing is hot still. I don't want it to cool off and then not stick on me. So we'll see you back in a few.
with the soles all finished out. They were originally a black one. That's why I like to save the original soles a lot of times. For me, I tend to forget, but they were black, so I made sure to make them a black there. Obviously, it's just worn out. I look at the edges here and right under here where it shows a lot of that black. And so that's what we've gone ahead and do. And I, I gotta dust this place at some point, right? There's no way of dusting a cobbler shop. You're crazy. But anyways, uh, so yeah, we got our house grade leather sole on there, which is a phenomenal one that's nice and flexible and everything. Uh, got it all stitched up. Heel base, thankfully, was all great and uh, turned out nicely right there. You can see it. No gaps because when they came in, Jeremiah sent them over. There, there were gaps and splits. Things were kind of coming apart and stuff. And so I really had to make sure to get that heel base taken care of. But Ideally, the video today that I was trying to show wasn't so much as the whole recraft and everything like that. We we're trying to really cover to make sure the whole squeaking was taken care of. So usually it's, it's like a whole list and I'll leave it down below. But first things first, when you got a squeaky boot, you want to check to see on the inside if there is any kind of loose leather, like an insole, for example, down in there that just kind of shifts around, moves around and doesn't cooperate right um, you know it that can happen second thing also you gotta also keep in mind the fact that your foot does perspire it sweats whether you have socks on or no socks it's gonna get through and don't wear boots without socks that's that's gross don't don't do it flip-flops and sandals no socks but shoes and boots wear your socks it's not sanitary and it's not good for the footwear either but Definitely keep that in mind regardless though that your foot will perspire and makes it a little moist in there slips around and you can get a little bit of a squeak sometimes. Those are the two most common ones that we've actually seen surprisingly where people complain about a squeak. There's nothing we can do about it. I'm sorry, but if your foot perspires and it shifts around, give the leather time or otherwise you're going to have to use something like talcum powder or in other words baby powder and spritz it in there. There are some athletic types of sprays in there that you can use as well and that prevents it. But typically it's either that so that peeled up a little bit and you can definitely see it. it's gonna be hard to show inside this boot but that wasn't the case with these ones I don't know if that's visible down there uh, because these have a synthetic insole in there so they don't tend to do that as much usually the more natural ones like leather insoles they will do that uh, the next thing is uh, check to see make sure that the heel base here it's not loose there's no major cracking going around here because this is stacked leather or composite sometimes or even if it's a plastic heel base especially with the plastic heel bases they'll split right here at the seam there and they'll squeak around as well uh, that's the next thing because we're going almost in order as far as like some of the more cheaper alternatives also at the same time so if it's the heel block that's not an issue or heel base uh, that can be fixed up usually the whole thing has to come off has to be cleaned out and reattached now if it's something more internal that's extremely hard to identify without you know really examining it internally we have to tear apart the sole a lot of times if it is a broken shank if it's a loose nail or something if it's a corroded nail it could be any of those things and usually that's taken care of during the resole process like we did today so we made sure to check that the shank was intact it wasn't loose or anything like that um, and if it was I mean it, it was kind of loose in there but we got that taken care of and the shank was popping in there as well so it's now secured and it's not going to be squeaking as easily and because we did a better fill in with the cork as well it's gonna hold in there much much more securely as well so when you start hearing that squeak or even a pop too a lot of times a pop could be the shank but it can also still be the heel base as well so noises are the most hardest thing to identify if you have a brand new pair of shoes check to see that it's first squeaking if it's because it's still breaking in but if you've had them for a while and they're still squeaking or popping it could either be a factory defect or something came loose in there after a period of time of wearing so definitely keep that in mind um, it could be a hundred things sounds and noises are the hardest always to identify for sure but as you saw when I picked up the boot I don't want to be twisting it right now but you can definitely like move it around enough to see if there's anything that's my hands just squeaking. If there's anything popping, squeaking, making noise, usually it's the shank that's loosed in that area or the heel base when you start trying to twist it around like that. So if your boots are say under warranty, you can get that usually covered um, and they'll either replace or fix it for you, but not a lot of boot or shoe companies offer that kind of extended warranty. 
and if you've had them for quite some time and they finally start doing that, say you warm them to some muddy, slushy conditions, water got in there, corroded a nail or two, and now you've got a kind of a loose hole, in other words, where the nail goes in and out of it, slides around, it could be something as simple as that, uh, threw away the sole, but yeah, one of these guys there. Any of these guys, just one of them can make a popping or squeaking noise very very easily so just keep it all in mind it it happens all the time we see it all the time it's a very common thing um, but first things first start out with the easiest things and that's checking to make sure that insole is glued in or if it's because your foot is perspiring once the shoe is off your foot don't be trying to test it out while it's on your foot to see where the sound is coming from pick it up in your hand listen to that pop or squeak, which right now we definitely don't have that. Now after all that twisting and turning, I have to buff these up again. Thanks a lot guys. But regardless, I still gotta give these a little love and attention. You can see that toes beating up. But um, at the time of this recording, um, I, I'm trying to figure out with Jeremiah to see if we're gonna be collabing on anything as far as a video quite yet, because I know he's been busy. I've been backed up to Jeremiah huge thank you because uh, he's been extremely patient with me on these i've been just just slammed with work here and non-stop something's going on whether it's at the shop or personal and and it's just chaos so regardless boots are all ready they're heading out the door and uh we'll talk to jeremiah a little bit once he gets these back if so and uh go from there in the meantime if you want any resole work done if your boots are squeaking making any noise or anything like that you're more than welcome to send them out to us i recommend starting by going to cobblersplus.com seeing if you want any of the options on there available if you need any products or anything like that definitely check that out but if you have more details and questions you want to ask you can either email us at procobblers at gmail.com that's currently what our email address is um later on down the road we may end up changing it for all we know because there's a lot of spam coming through constantly that's why we get backed up on emails but if you want a quicker response something a little quicker would be instagram would be cobblers plus co or on facebook at cobblers plus you can definitely message us on there if you have a shorter question or a comment leave them down below otherwise in the meantime hit that thumbs up button it helps our channel grow because we're creeping up onto that 10,000 mark very quickly and uh, definitely make sure to share the channel because the quicker we grow, the more giveaways we're going to do. I think we're going to be doing a giveaway here very soon, uh, as soon as we hit that 10,000 mark. So make sure you're subscribed. If you want to enter in for that giveaway, we'll be notifying everybody of what the plan is here very soon. So stay tuned for that. Don't miss out on free giveaways. Subscribe, share the channel, and make sure you hit that thumbs up and notification bell icon to be notified once we're going to be announcing that giveaway item or service. Who knows what it may be? I'm still trying to decide. I'm indecisive. But again, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.